Hello and welcome to the Superintendent's Perspective. My name is Mario Salinas. I am the Edinburgh School District Superintendent. Today I am joined by Dr. Anthony Garza. He is Assistant Superintendent for Support Services. Today's topic is, is uh, the COVID update. It's a COVID uh, Omicron variant update. Uh, what we want to tell our community, Dr. Garza, is that we, 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 we feel that our schools are safe. Yes, sir. You know, I know there's COVID. There's COVID in, in the community. There's COVID in, in, in our schools. Yes, there is. Um, but we feel that um, our schools are safe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, thank you for having me on the superintendent mm -hmm. perspective. Uh, but you're right. We have protocols in place at our schools that they don't have at home or at the stores or in the restaurants. So yeah, I, know, I know we hear it sometimes. They're not safe. You know, they don't. We do have procedures. We have sanitizer throughout the schools. Uh, they have rules on, on, on trying to keep them away, social distance as much as possible. You know, we're going on two years already in March that we've been in this pandemic. And, and you know, I, I think we're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Yes, we, we've been at it for almost two years. We've been, you know, uh, managing and, and adjusting and modifying our plans and adjust changing our plans and so on to adjust to the to the to COVID. I keep saying to anybody that, to everybody that our schools are safe. You know, everybody wears a mask. It's it's yeah. mandatory. There's no exceptions yeah, it, in it, our school. It's, it's kind of sad and, and it's unfortunate that we're learning to live with the pandemic, right? With the ongoing mm -hmm. uh, coronavirus that we have. And, you know, I mean, that's just the way it is. You get vaccinated, you, you you practice your sanitizing and, and hand washing and, and social distancing as much as possible, and you just live life. We visited two, two classrooms, a sixth grade math classroom at Memorial, just to see how the protocols, if they were in place, et cetera. We went into that classroom. There was a classroom of about 20 students, and there was two students absent, two. That's pretty good. They're, that's real good, and they were behind the carols, and they were doing their work, Everybody was wearing a mask. The teacher was up teaching and communicating with the students. Well, as of right now, I think it's it's important to have the the uh, the shields up again. I mean, you, know, you, get, you get this more, you feel more safer in the classroom. You know, the kids. I think the kids also feel safer. We reinforce the hand sanitizer every time they walk into the classroom. But yes, they come in and out. They get hand sanitizer. You know, wipe the desk every every can every all the, throughout the day. You know, try to keep it as safe as possible. Yeah, they seem pretty comfortable. Actually, I think it's gotten to the point where they feel uncomfortable without the mask on. And I told the teacher, the carols, that they've been up all year? And he said, well, we, we had them up at the beginning of the year with a Delta surge, and we put them down when the numbers were kind, kind of not there anymore. And then mm -hmm. we, to start this, this new semester, we put them back up just for, for safety. Yeah. The carols, the masking, the social distancing, uh, the hand sanitizers, the, I mean, we think, we know all of that works. Everybody is getting taken care of. And the new thing that we're doing, cleaning the desks, is really good because when we eat lunch, we leave a bunch of crumbs, germs in there, and then they wash everything. And another thing that helps us with that is our masks, that they allow us put them on, so then, with that, the things that we have between the dividers are good for us. So when someone coughs, it doesn't come to us, it comes to the dividers. So it's pretty good for our classes. There's been a lot of uh, surrounding school districts that have, have given the students a couple of days off. I know, I know some of them, no names, uh, did two days off to, to, to deep clean and sanitize their schools. And uh, this past weekend, with the approval mm -hmm. uh, of yourself and the school board, we gave our, our custodians, mm -hmm. we paid them overtime pay to clean all 43 of our mm -hmm. schools. And they, they got in there and they, they deep cleaned all of them, mm -hmm. just like our surrounding schools did. And they did it, they took days off during the week. So they got to make up those days. And we did mm -hmm. it on the weekend because we, we think it's very important that the kids keep coming to school. Yeah, and the, and the staff are staying late uh, during the week as well to, to further clean their facilities. I, yesterday, th this week, we had a, we had a meeting here at, at Central Administration, and I, I drove by, by a couple of schools on purpose. I, I just wanted to see 
the, the, the facilities, and I could see that the hospital staff were still there. And it was at about 7.30 at night. Yeah. It makes me feel like reassured, that, like I know like they're cleaning and all that. So if I see them, I'm just like, okay, I'm reassured that this like place is clean. I know what's going on. But like when it comes to classrooms, like I feel like I'm really safe there. Yeah. You know, um, because they're standing behind to make sure they're clean. The schools are cleaner. And, and remember, at the elementary school, we added a, an additional custodial staff member. That's right. They were at three. And know, we gave them a fourth one to four assist each. with uh, trying to keep the schools clean, even though we know that uh, most of the transmission uh, happens airborne. You know, when I'm talking and or the children are eating mm -hmm. or... That's where transmission happens. But we, you know, to, to appease the parents, we, we're going to clean the, the surfaces, the, the, the floors, the walls, the lights, it, you know. So we are also doing that. They're keeping everything safety so kids can't come to learn, like math. We're being safe so we can be learning subjects, more things. And I like how they have been doing the safety rules. It makes me feel good, makes me feel safe from the pandemic. And it makes me just happy that they're helping us to clean the room so we could learn more. If you'll remember, we invested heavily in, on student carols. Oh yeah. So that students can be behind the carol when they, they can be talking to the teacher and. You know, and they were in place this week when we went to visit them in the cafeteria, in the classrooms. Yeah. Uh, so we, we uh, <clears throat> I feel confident the superintendent that two years into this, into this uh, pandemic, that we do a pretty good job of keeping our students safe as much as possible. Nothing's guaranteed. No, no, no nothing's guaranteed, but we, mm -hmm. we, we're pushing hard and we push the principals and the staff. I, th I believe we're doing the best we can do. And the students are very good, um, currently constantly telling them, sanitize your hands. They are excellent about doing that. They are very well behaved, following directions. I tell them about the importance of the hygiene, why it is important that we do that. And they follow through. After the holidays, when we came back, I told my students we were going to do that. Like constantly did cleaning, like morning, afternoon, evening, I mean, before they go home. But um, they're taking care of that. So that really makes it easier on us, for sure. Um, I wanted to mention that, that uh, our virtual academy mm -hmm. for the kinder through six is still going strong. And uh, Uli Al and his team of teachers, uh, their numbers have increased these last few weeks. What are their latest numbers? I believe there are around 275 students oh, that's right That's the now. highest we've ever had. It's kinder through sixth grade. So mm -hmm. out there, parents, kinder through sixth grade, we're still taking applications if, if you're interested uh, in practicing virtual. Now, they have rules. They have to have the camera on 100%. They're on all day with, with the teacher. They don't have the same teachers from the school. They have a virtual teacher. Yeah. But it works. It's ECISD, mm -hmm. and, and we still have that program. We have applications here in our front mm -hmm. office at Central Administration. You turn them into my office, Dr. Garza, and we get you in there the next day or two. It's going pretty good. I uh, like virtual. I think it's I think it's really good that the teachers are so nice and so understanding. Like if you get something wrong, they help you, and you you'll learn from your mistakes. So we're we're processing those as they come in. Yeah, for the parents that are not comfortable yet. You know, kinder and, through six. Yeah, kinder through six. Yes. And they're not comfortable. <clears throat> they're not vaccinated. Uh, we got the virtual setting for, for them. Uh, yeah. We continue to offer vaccine, correct? Correct. Uh, daily, uh, mm -hmm. 1 to 4 p.m., we're here at Central Administration. What vaccines? Uh, we have Moderna and Pfizer. First, second dose? First, second dose, and booster shot if mm -hmm. they're eligible. And uh, we, we're still getting people. How much do we charge? They're free. They're free. They're free. We don't charge them anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know it's been a little slower lately, but but last week it had picked up. We had about 500 that when we went to the activity center showed mm -hmm. up, but we're still taking them here. When they went to the activity center, were there mostly, mostly staff members? No, it was a good members? combination. It, it was it was staff, mm -hmm. students, and, and even community. We had other people that were just coming out that, that have nothing to do with, with mm -hmm. us. But, you know, they live in the ECISD zone, mm -hmm. and they, they came in. So we're open to community right now. We'll, we'll take, uh, as far as vaccine goes, yeah. Yeah, I know that last week when school, some schools were closing that uh, we were getting messaging from our parents that they don't want us to close. They, yeah. they want to send their children to school. The children want to be in school. Yeah. You know, I know I have a son. I have two sons, actually. 
and and they don't want to stay home. They they want to go to campus, and they put on their mask, and 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 they try to be safe. And most parents are like that, and most parents are back at work. Yeah. Mom and dad don't want to to. They want the schools to stay open. They want their to send their children to the school, so they can study and they can go to work. And uh, we we offering full service all day and into the afternoon for after school programs and the UIO program. We're not slowing down, we keep going. I've had a conversation with parents and I did have some parents that were uh, asking about the resources that the district has provided for us. And I really feel that the district has provided more than enough uh, on resources and they continue to provide the resources to keep our campus safe. I do believe it, it provides some sense of security for our staff and our students because a lot of our students are coming back, they're in the classrooms, they're engaging with each other. Our teachers are engaging with the students and um, being involved in the classroom. So I think that their sense of security is, is good. Uh, mandating masks, uh, recommending vaccines, uh, recommending social distancing when they're eating, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, e even our, uh, one of the things that, that we've scrutinized, you and I, a lot, is uh, overnight field trips. Yes. And uh, what we've done is we have a rule for our, our students that are going to go somewhere overnight. We, we COVID test them the day before they leave. So if they're positive, they're not gonna go and infect others, infect everyone on the trip. And uh, we've stuck to that. And, mm -hmm. and even though we've run out of COVID tests, we have just enough for these overnight trips to get them tested. And uh, we're taking those on a case-by-case -case basis, depending where they're going, how long, how many kids on the trip. Obviously, if you're taking 15, 20 students versus 150 students, all those factors come into play. And, and we talk to the sponsors and, and we've, uh, We've had to make some mm -hmm. tough decisions, but we're trying to keep it going as, as normal mm -hmm. as possible. I, I do want to say this. Yesterday afternoon, we get a call from the, the Texas Education Agency, and the gentleman that was, was uh, making the phone call was saying that the Biden administration has sent, I don't know how many millions of test kids to, to the school districts, and this gentleman that I was talking to from the Texas Education Agency said that he picked five school districts in the state of Texas right. to, to start this program as, as a model uh, to, to see how it's going to work out and to, and, and to do like a test run. And he picked Edinburgh as one of the five. On uh, Tuesday evening, we received a call from TEA regarding how many tests that they thought we could use. And I asked them why, and they said, well, we picked five schools in the state of Texas that really utilized a lot of testing for COVID and Edinburgh is one of those. And so they knew that we could test about 1,000 people a day. So uh, they put us into it. And the CDC is actually going to be supplying those. It's the Binax rapid test. They're going to be supplying those to TEA. TEA is going to forward them on down to us. So we're one of five schools in the state of Texas that are getting these. Because of the, of the vaccine rollout that we've done, because of the testing and the accountability that we've, that we've done with the we've tested thousands of people and, and, and done the appropriate uh, accountability of those tests. The, we vaccinated and continue to vaccinate. So the man from T, TA was saying, we chose Edinburgh, one of the first school districts to receive yeah. the testing kit because of the work that you've done testing and vaccinating. And we expect those vaccines next week. We're looking at 10,000, I'm was, sorry, not vaccine, test kits. Test kit, and that was awesome. I mean, mm -hmm. it's our track record for, for leading the fight against this pandemic. You're right, we're a vaccine provider. We've done the test. We get, as fast as we get vaccine in, we get it out to the community. And we've been doing this for two years. And that was an awesome phone call. I was there with, with yeah, Diana Davila. That was awesome. And uh, she told, you are one of the five school districts in the state that we've selected from the Joe Biden administration to get those COVID tests those to. COVID tests. And we need them because yeah. we use them in our schools to determine who needs to go home and who yeah. needs to and stay. And that's just a, a testament to the work that the nursing department is doing. Uh, Diana Davila and her nurses, they're, they're doing a standout. Yeah, be uh, patient job. with our nurses. They're very overworked. They're p humans too. They get yeah. sick, they get mm -hmm. sick too. And uh, you know, we look at them, we think they're robots and they, they're yeah. always gonna be there and you know. And, and I do wanna tell them to be completely transparent. There are cases of COVID on our campuses, probably every single campus. Uh, we're trying to keep them to the minimum. We're doing the best that we can to minimize the, the transmission. Uh, and we feel that uh, our, our, our protocols work. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I, I totally agree with you. Mm -hmm. This concludes today's episode of the Superintendent's Perspective. 
Thank you for joining us. Stay healthy and stay safe.